So You Can Play That Game is proudly sponsored by NiceGameShop.com, the place to go for rare and unusual Asian games. Hi, I'm Michael and this is my top 10 most anticipated games being released at Essen Spiel 2017. So this is being done live. I think so far uh, we've got one person on on the chat and I'm sure we'll have more joining. What I'm actually going to do is I'm just going to go through my top 10, my kind of just brief why they're on the list, which will probably take about 10 minutes or so. And then we're going to switch over to be looking at doing Q&A which can be about Essen, uh, or it could be about anything you want to talk about, really. So let's start off on our number 10. In at number 10, we have Gaia Project by Z-Man Games. So it's no surprise to anyone, really, that this is on my list, I think, because Terra Mystica is in my top 10 games of all time. So I've got to kind of take a look at this at some point. I, whether I'll be able to or not, I think it'll probably, for me, end up waiting until UKGE now. Because the game has such a high price point. And although I'm tempted to play, pay that, I don't know that it's going to add enough when I prefer fantasy theme over sci-fi. Just slightly. I love both themes. But I prefer that slightly. That... Okay, it's got the variable setup. Uh, yeah, I'm not sure there's enough there to warrant me getting both. And I think I prefer the theme of Terra Mystica. So that's kind of where I'm at with that. That's why that's at number 10 and not up higher, really, just because of that concern. So that out of the way, let's take a look at number nine. And number nine is Clans of Caledonia. Now, this is on the list because I actually, well, I, I was going to say bid to do videos for the Kickstarter, but it's more that, you know, when they were saying they're looking for reviewers and stuff, I read up all the stuff, I watched everything they had about it, and I was just like, wow, this just looks like such a great midweight euro. <laughs> yes, it's farming, which is done to death, but it looked so good. and. So that made me want to do those videos, but I couldn't do those videos. So I now want to kind of see the game myself. You know, I saw all the stuff on the Kickstarter. I didn't back the Kickstarter just because, well, I don't back a lot of Kickstarters. I mean, if you've seen my other chats, you'll know part of it is because just the cost and stuff of Kickstarter, I can't really afford to have that tied in to um, that money. I, I, I don't have enough disposable income to not have pay the money out and get an immediate back to be able to put onto the channel very often. So it's only the odd few tend to be lower price ones that I would personally probably back if I actually had a proper job like the rest of you out there. So yeah, that's Clans of Caledonia. Uh, let's move on to number eight, which is Keeper. So this is kind of similar feel to it to me as Clans of Caledonia. It's that midweight Euro. I really quite enjoyed um, Keyflower, which is the kind of spiritual successor to this, or it's in a series of like five or six games. And so yeah, I really enjoyed that. It's one of those few games where I actually kind of enjoyed that bidding mechanic, because I think it's because you get the stuff back and you can use them elsewhere and stuff. It kind of just worked and keyed out really well for me. But it just felt a bit too heavy for me to go out and buy, especially when it wouldn't be particularly beneficial to the channel because it was an older game at this point. Because I, I think, when was it I tried this? It was last year or this year? So the game had been out for a couple of years anyway, I think, by that point, Keyflower. So yeah, Keeper though, basically the idea of that but better, which is what I've heard, uh, just makes me really excited and I, I really want to try that so that's one that hopefully I'll be able to find at some point at a reasonable price. Then next up which is I think we're on to number seven Noria. Th this this is such a shallow shallow uh, entry. Um, it's largely due to the artwork. The artwork and the theme it's this fantasy theme with flying ships 
I just love that whole kind of fantasy flying ships thing where it is like old world flying ships and not like magical flying ships and type thing. I, I just think that's such a great theme. I love that theme. But then mechanically, we do have deck builders. It, it's got kind of deck builder, pool builder there. Although I wasn't blown away with my one try of Orleans. Um, I just found that very dry and a bit dull. I'm hoping the theme will pull that kind of bad building that this is going to do. Uh, so yeah, I'm excited to try that. Um, I know I said I was going to leave questions, but this is just for Jade um, because she's uh, coming a bit late. Uh, so in summary, what we've had so far, number 10, we had Gaia Project. Number nine was Clans of Caledonia. And then number eight was Keeper. So, and then this is number seven on my list, Noria. Um, so yeah, as I say, that's my thoughts on that one. Let's take a look at number six. And I know I'm going through these very quickly, but I, I imagine you're gonna have questions about them. We can have more of a discussion about them. So that's why I'm being very brief here and keeping it nice and short so we can get to the more fun stuff. <laughs> Uh, sorry, I'm laughing because as I've brought up the image and I've not even said the name, Fallows, uh the designer is actually on. Uh, hi, Chris. I, I love your news. I watch it every week. And that is why your game is on here. Not because I love your news, but because obviously watching your news every week, I've been kind of following along a bit as you've been designing this. And therefore, I'm excited to see how it's ended up, the finished product and stuff. Um, sadly, I've never been able to go to any of the conventions you've had it playtesting over in the States. Uh, so I've not been able to try it. But yeah, I'm really excited for you that you've got it published. And yeah, I really hope I'll be able to uh, play it really soon. Um, I don't know if you know if what WizKids kind of plan for launch for retail is because sadly I'm not making Essen but um, it's definitely one I want to look at picking up because well yeah it looks good. <laughs> uh, so let's move on to number five which is Harvest. Now many of the games on this list are on this list because I like their predecessors. I mean so far we've got uh, <laughs> Gaia project and now and then we had Keeper and now we've got Harvest. Now Harbour is one of my go-to kind of uh, holiday games. It's just I've never really got on too well with a lot of the Tiny Epic games and Harbour was like a spiritual successor to the Tiny Epic games and I actually really like Harbour and Harbour is also the successor to Harvest and that is why this is kind of on my list because I love the kind of theme again I love the artwork and I quite like this worker place placement game where you're getting kind of a big game feel but with a small box so I'm hoping Harvest is going to kind of follow that on and uh, deliver where Harbour did so well and following the suit of why games are on this list we have Queen Domino because <laughs> number 10 on my most uh, 10 top games of all time is King Domino. So yeah, I, I want to know more about Queen Domino. I mean, I, I say I want to know more. I know quite a lot about it, but I feel like I need to try and play it before I can make up my mind. And either way, the idea of just being able to make King Domino bigger, it kind of can act as an expansion to King Domino. So that's why this is higher. If it didn't have that feature, it would probably be lower on the list. But the fact that you can then make King Domino play up to six people or do seven by seven grids for four players, even without the other bits that you can add in, like the modular bits of like dragon and stuff. And I love dragons, so that's kind of a given I'm gonna add that. That's why this is on the list. So yeah, I'm really excited to buy that one. Um, so let's move on. I've forgotten what number we're at to. Uh, I think I think we're at number three. So let's have a look. Number three, Pandemic Legacy Season 2. So yeah, I mean, I played Pandemic Legacy Season 1. I thought it was a fantastic game. The only thing I wanted was more story. Now, I've not watched any reviews. I know the Dice Tower have come out with a review now on Pandemic Legacy Season 2, but I've not watched it yet because I, I just, I want to avoid finding out anything about this. I want to go into it completely. I know nothing and just 
have that story, what limited story there is. Uh, the main thing was that your actions didn't affect the story, not that there wasn't story in Pandemic Layers of the Sea Season 1, sorry. So I'm hoping that this is going to have more of a kind of diversifying. Um, it, as, if you do one thing, you'll go off on this kind of side of the story track or this side of the story track type situation. So I'm really hoping that that is going to be the case. So that is number three. So we're getting to the uh, last few and I'm running out of breath. And we have Charterstone at number two. Um, so yeah, this is another legacy game. Stonemaier produced fantastic games. Now I know none of them are in my top 10 and that I said that Scythe was overrated, but it's still a fantastic game. Viticulture, a fantastic game. They're just not games that were quite good enough for me. Now, the artwork of Charterstone, the worker placement aspect, the lightness of it, but kind of the midweightness and the growth and development of it, the fact that you're gonna have development paths that if you go one direction, it will go different to another direction. I'm really excited by that. And so that's why this is so high on the list. So what could possibly beat Charterstone, which is a lot of people's number one most anticipated game this year? Well, there's just one game unlock mystery adventures <laughs> now yes unlock the the original free box set of unlock did not make it to my top 10 games of all time for one reason lack of replay value that was it otherwise it would have been in there i absolutely loved unlock like we just sat and devoured it me and my wife we just so much loved them and yeah so all of the kind of escape room games well i say all of them i i really enjoyed um exit the game as well which might be released at essen i'm not too sure it looks like the german version is being released and that's why that's not made it onto the list because it only looks like the german version um whereas the Fen french version of unlock was actually released months and months ago and i was like when's it going to be in english when's it going to be in english and this is going to be it this is its english release so really super excited about that okay so oh, that's enough of me ranting about the games that are on my top 10 now let's take a look at the chat and what i'm actually going to do is because i've missed a whole lot of chat while i've been ranting um, i'm actually going to go back a bit uh, just scroll up so let's take a look so on we have uh, Paul from Gaming Rules thanks for being on Paul I know you said you might not be able to make it uh, we've also got Peter from Inside the Box hi Peter we've got Justin from Chip Talk I thought you were meant to be working Justin hmm uh, then we've got Jade, who I did answer some of your questions. Thanks for being on, Jade. We've got Chris Bryan, uh, who's the designer for Fala... Uh, fa fa uh, I can't pronounce it. Falalas? Falalas? Fa oh, I can't do it. My, I'm getting all tongue-tied. Too much talking. I, I, I don't know what I should do. This will help. We've also got Eden on. Thanks for being on, Eden. Um, I'm not sure which game, at uh, which point, which game we were looking at that you said uh, you'd pre-ordered that so either way I mean I've pre-ordered several of the games well I say several of the games pre-ordered I've got Pandemic Legacy Season 2 and Charleston because they're just the ones that I've been able to pre-order so far um, this game looks beautiful I'm going to guess that's Noria because the artwork on that is just astounding uh, we've also got on Christopher Russo thanks for being on as well um, so I'm looking for a game like Terraforming Mars, but another theme. Oh, um, really, I don't think there is one yet. I, I don't think it will be long, but I don't think there is quite one that plays the same as Terraforming Mars, that has that same feel of developing and growing in that way, um, with regards to it being card based and then the cards are allowing you to put things out. There, there are games that might kind of tick some of those boxes for you. It kind of depends what things you're most interested in from Terraforming Mars, whether it's the car play, the engine building, or the kind of win condition of the terraforming itself, etc. Um, 
So Jade says, Gaia may be almost rethemed of Terra Mystica. It, it is basically a retheme of Terra Mystica. They've made some slight changes, apparently, like giving it a modular board um, and introduced a few other things, I think. But yeah, it, it's basically, it's Terra Mystica in space. Uh, we've also got Mihaha, welcome. Um, so will it all fit in the box, King Domino and Queen Domino? No, they won't all fit in one box, but um, they're standalone games that you can combine, is the idea. Um, but yeah, they, they've not done it so that you can fit them in the one box, which would kind of be good, especially if you're using all the tiles, having a bigger box so that you can shuffle them all together well would be a good idea, really. Um, Maybe maybe you can suggest it to them. Like if you message, um, I think it's who is it who's done King Domino? Is it Blue Orange? Uh, let me check. Yeah, Blue Orange Games. Um, if you message Blue Orange Games with a suggestion, they might come out with a box that people can buy. Um, I know if it was say five to ten pound delivered type thing, I would certainly buy that. Um, and then what else do we have? Uh, so Christopher's saying you can mix Queen Domino uh, for bigger games, yeah, that which just sounds cool to me. So yeah, that's good. Um, Justin says number one was surprising. Um, yeah, I think that was, I, I think those games are really overlooked by a lot of people, and so I'm kind of surprised that more people aren't more excited for this. I think that Unlock and the Exit games had a huge amount of buzz. I, I think part of it is a lot of people prefer the Exit games to Unlock, whereas I prefer Unlock. Although Exit has the better, um, better puzzles and stuff, but yeah. So, oh right. Uh, on to the next, uh, Christopher. But I don't know if I will buy Queen Domino for the kids. It's more complicated for them. Yeah, I mean, I would say just keep with uh, for a five and nine year old. It probably makes most sense to just keep with King Domino rather than introduce Queen Domino. It is just introducing extra complexity, really that you don't particularly need. Uh, so Justin from Chip Talk. Uh, these unlock games were really unique and accessible, like definitely the sort of games that easily hook non-gamers. Oh yeah, they totally are. I completely agree with that. Um, you know, anyone who, I mean, you look at how many non-gamers do escape rooms. Anyone who does escape rooms, if you go, rather than doing 30 pound a person or whatever, to go to an escape room for an hour, here's 30 pound for all of you to do three hours worth of escape rooms. So much better value. And Unlock has the advantage of you can then sell it on afterwards. So after you, you know, you knock off five quid or whatever, so it's cost you five quid and then you're selling it on. Absolutely brilliant. Uh, hi Jade from Korea. Um, so yeah, Korea, wow. Nice widespread audience. So I think we've got people on from the UK, from America and from uh, Korea. Yeah, uh, Chris, I'm really sorry that I can't pronounce it. Favelas? Favelas? I, I think I might have that right at some point. Um, I, I need to go back and watch some of you, your uh, videos of you saying it. That might help. Um, oh man, look at that proper British pint glass. Yeah, I, I always drink out of pint glasses. I drink a lot of water. And so, yeah, that is a proper, proper pint glass. Um, I always buy pint glasses. Just... I get annoyed by little glasses. Um, then on we've got Behind the Box. So this is uh, Chris at Behind the Box. Hi, Chris. Um, I wanted to, to thank you, Chris, actually. Um, on my last Q&A, Chris suggested a new piece of software, which was um, OBS, which is what I'm using to do the streaming, um, because I had been using XSplit and that crashed. Now, fingers crossed, this version, this OBS, so far at least, is all going smoothly. I think there's a bit of skipping, a bit of um, kind of frame loss, but for the most part, it's working really well. So thank you for that suggestion. Um, I did also have it seconded by um, Russell from uh, Board Gaming at Home, who does a lot of live stream. What they do is they live stream the whole family playing games and they do a really good job. So he also suggested this, which was like then, yeah, definitely this software to use. It's free, it does everything that XSplit did, did and more and better. So yeah, absolutely fantastic. Oh, uh, Lindsay is on as well, uh, apparently. 
Oh no, Justin's saying hi, Chris and Lindsay. I, I don't know if Lindsay will be on. It's probably just Chris, uh, Justin, but yeah. If, if Lindsay is on, hello to you too. <laughs> um, then, oh, I've lost the chat window. Um, where are we are? There we are, chat window. Um, so Michael uh, says, hi all, looking forward to my first visit to Essen next week. Oh, I'm so jealous of you. Are there any expansions I'm looking forward to being released at Essen? Um, no, I don't get a lot of expansions though, so that's not too surprising. The most interesting expansions I've heard about are actually for games I don't have, which is things like uh, Feast for Odin. Is it Feast for Odin? Yeah, Feast for Odin, which I wanna try but I don't want to go out and sp spend so much money on it, um, partly because then postage is going to be a killer if I try and sell it on again. So, And there's no one selling it secondhand to get it cheaper that way. But yeah, I hope you have a fantastic time at Essen. Um, I'm super jealous. I wish I could be going. But on the bright side, I do get to go to a convention. Uh, there's a convention down in Kent in the UK on the Saturday. So I'm going to be going to that and I'm going to be doing a panel, which is going to be cool as well, and just getting to play lots of games with people. Um, so expansion, uh, sorry, so Cameron Franklin says, I really like the idea of standalones playing together. I've been wanting to try that with Dead of Winter, but there's so much content. That's kind of put me off with the Dead of Winter stuff because there's just so much of it. And I don't feel I need an expansion particularly for Dead of Winter at the moment. But if I did, I'd want it to be something smaller that I could just add into the existing game. The idea of an entire standalone game I've then got to combine lots of different modules just felt too much for me and that is why I've not gone in for that one um, but then Jade says with regards to expansions she's excited about Lorenzo and Marco Polo so I didn't realize they had expansions coming out I don't think no I was aware of the Marco Polo one but I didn't actually like the Marco Polo game um, I think part of that was the mood I was in when I was playing it and also when I tried it type thing and the people I was playing with I, I didn't particularly know very well and I was just feeling very out of my depth it was a new group that I'd never been to before and yeah it was a very heavy game um, so that was very kind of ugh, difficult um, yeah with Lorenzo I've not actually tried it I've had Lorenzo recommended to me um, and it's on my list to try at some point but again it's one of these expensive games it's a heavier game that I tend to play as well so that kind of makes it less of a priority for me to try out. Uh, Christopher says, don't forget to like the video. Yeah, if, if you're watching, please do like the video. Um, obviously that'll probably help get other people to watch it and stuff and help. Yeah, it probably does something good. At the very least, it makes me feel better when I look at figures and go, yay, people liked it. <laughs> so that's always good. Um, then Miha says, I'm really excited about Indian Summer Game. It looks so beautiful. It does look beautiful and I would be more excited about this if it wasn't for Cottage Garden. I, I, it's not that I dislike Cottage Garden, I just felt it wasn't a good enough game. I felt that Patchwork was such a fantastic game and I wanted Cottage Garden to be that but better for four players and it wasn't. It, it was a very relaxed game. It had no real feel of competitiveness, competitiveness to it. However, again, another game with lovely arch. So I think if you liked Cottage Garden, then that's definitely one that um, you should check out, I would agree. But for me, it's kind of uh, been a bit burned on that kind of series of games. And then Baron Park came out uh, around the UK Games Expo and that was fantastic four player and it was like yeah I'm never gonna play Cottage Garden again because I'll just play Baron Park so that's kind of got me less excited but it's definitely one that if I had the chance to play I would like to sit down and play uh, so Chris says India Summer looks great the box really threw me I thought it was Cottage Garden yeah I mean it does look very similar um, I think everyone had that kind of double take moment the first time they saw it definitely Uh, stuffed Fables, Stuffed Fables. Sorry, um, Miha's saying, and Jerry Hawthorne's new game, Stuffed Fables. Oh, this is the one that's kind of a uh, spiritual successor to um, Mice and Mystics, isn't it? It's in that kind of same line, mechanically speaking. Um, yeah, I mean, that, that looks fantastic, miniatures and stuff. But um, yeah, I think it, it's just a 
bit low down on the priority list for me personally. Um, and Mihas from Slovenia. So we really have got people from all over. We've got people from various places in Europe. Slovenia is lovely, by the way, if, if no one's ever been there. Um, I went for, I think I've been, I've been there once. Uh, we went there for a summer holiday and it was absolutely gorgeous and everything was so cheap and yeah it was just one of the best holidays I've ever had so yeah highly recommend that um, so Paul from Gaming Rule says I'm listening in from Seta Alpha 5 you've lost me on that one Paul I don't know what Seta Alpha 5 is <laughs> it's probably part of the thing um <laughs> So Watch It Paint It uh, says, is that LLD flicker or <laughs> is Michael got serious heat waves coming off him? It wouldn't surprise me if it was heat waves off me. Uh, no, it's flicker. I, I don't know what's causing it. Um, I've tried to get rid of it. I've not been able to. I think it's because I'm using the laptop camera. Uh, the audio is probably better than any of my previous um, live stuff that I've been doing because I'm actually using the, uh, the um, clip mic but the video I'm still using the inbuilt one and it's not great. I don't, the thing is it doesn't like a lot of light, but then if I remove the light, it's like, wow, that's so badly lit. And I look, it just looks terrible that I kind of, so I've got the big studio lights on and that's, I think what's causing the flicker. I kind of deemed it just about acceptable. Um, if it is causing problems for anyone, I, I figured it's not bad enough to be like an ep epileptic risk. I can just about notice it when I focus on it. But yeah, if it is a problem for anyone, let me know. And I can always hide the view of me or shrink it or something like that. Um, so uh, then we've got behind the box. You're glad it's working so far. Yeah, I mean, uh, it seems to be working so much better. So that's good. Um, Eden says, when will there be a video about Falavas? I pre-ordered it on the great advice of my Twitter friends, uh, but can't find anything about it. Um, I thought I'd seen videos about it. I thought that um, Board Game Geek had done a preview video for it at Gen Con, I think. Um, but yeah, I mean, there's not really any reviews from well-known reviewers or anything out yet. I don't know, Chris um, might, if he's still on, be able to give us some insight into that. Oh, in fact, um, he has responded to Eden. Um, so yeah, it's it's because it's it's not been major. It's it's only arriving for Essen. Um, so there might be a few demo copies, and Chris is going to be making a how to play video as soon as he gets his copy. So, have you done any how to play videos before, Chris? I don't think I've seen any. I'd be interested to know. Um, obviously, if you'd like to send me a review copy, yeah, I'll, I'll happily do one. Um, and I, I do great how to plays. So, um, <laughs> uh, Chris from behind the box says Lindsay is working, sucker. Yeah, yeah, she is. Uh, I thought she would be. Um, and then is that Uncon that I'm going to? Yes, it is going to be Uncon. So that's um, in Ramsgate down in Kent. Um, so if you're able to go down to that, sadly, Chris says he's not going to be able to. But uh, hopefully we'll, I, I think you said you're going to Aircon um, next year. So we'll be able to see there. Oh, Jade's a man. I'm really sorry, Jade. I'm so sorry. <laughs> um, I'm really sorry. I, I think in Western culture, it's... Um, a woman's name. I don't know why that's different, but I have seen before in like Asian culture, Jade is a male name, so I should have known. I'm sorry about that. Um, then what we got? Uh, Cameron Franklin loves patchwork. Uh, you, who he uh, just taught it to their friend who's really into gaming and had a great bunch of plays of it. Yeah, I mean, that's the great thing about Patchwork. It's short enough that you will just kind of play a game and you're like, should we just play another one? Um, but at the same time, if you need just a quick filler game, you can play it as a filler game, but you can happily play it for longer. And it's just a really just nice, succinct, elegant game. Oh, so we've got Adam on. So Adam hasn't missed a chat yet. So <laughs> hi, Adam. Um, Adam's a designer. He's doing a game called um, Spectre. 
Spectrum Force, which is a card game uh, for anyone who doesn't know Adam. Uh, and then uh, Adam's just having a bit of a chat with Chris. Yeah, there are a lot of Chris's, aren't there, Adam? There seem to be less Adams, so you're, you're, you're good there with having the name Adam. Uh, Watch It Paint It says, your audio is good, the lighting looks like you have LED bulbs. No worry, it's fine for me. Yeah, um, it's not LEDs, they're like these giant things that are about this big um, that I bought from, I think they came from China, but they were really cheap. It was like for the whole lighting setup and the stand for the backdrop and stuff, it was, oh, what's it? it was like 60 quid, um, which in dollars is like $40. So that just made perfect sense to get. And I even had one of the bulbs go and they were just like really good about replacing it and stuff as well. So if I have an option for white balance, I don't think I can adjust anything um, on the webcam. Uh, Chris, or at least I've not found a way to adjust any of the settings for the webcam, webcam which is a shame. Uh, Adam, has the top 10 list been discussed yet? Um, well, I mean, it's kind of been discussed. I, w I went through it. Um, obviously, if you have any questions about it, I've just been kind of going through the chat now uh, since then. But just in summary, at number 10, we had Gaia Project. Number nine was Clans of Caledonia. Number eight was Keeper. Number seven, Noria. Number six, Falavus, Fala, Favalus, Favalus, oh, something like that. Uh, number five, I will learn it at some point, Harvest. Uh, number four, Queen Domino. Number three, Pandemic Legacy Season 2. Number two, Charterstone. And at number one was Unlock Mystery Adventures. So hopefully, Adam, that's got you uh, all caught up. Um, obviously, if you want to find out more about what I said about those games and why they're on the list, then, yeah, you can just g jump back to the start. I don't think you'll be able to do it at the moment because I've put it on low latency so that the chat works better, basically. Um, but you can watch it at another point, and if you've got any comments on any of those games or any questions for me on any of those games, then do let me know. Um, yeah, sorry, I've given you spoilers. You said you didn't want any, but uh, oh well. Um, and Chris says, oh, he spoke to Mark at Aircon, he's now on the press list. So this is what I recommended to Chris on the last Q&A, um, speaking to Mark and getting on the press list and like just getting more involved in the community and stuff. So that will be cool. And Adam wants to try and go to uh, Aircon. Yeah, I'd highly recommend it if you can, but obviously it is quite far up north, so it's not too cheap. Um, but I think you did say you were in Liverpool, so I don't know, Liverpool to Harrogate, that's probably slightly less distance, but you're probably still going to need a um, hotel. So Chris says, nope, I haven't done any how to play videos. I'll let WizKids know they should send you a copy. Yeah, I mean, that would be cool. Um, I've tried contacting WizKids before about review copies for games, um, and they just kind of say I'm too small. So <laughs> if I get one, I get one. If not, I'll just keep an eye out for it in retail and probably pick it up and try and get a review done at some point. And I look forward to your how to play video as well. Um, I think it's great when designers who know about doing video do these kind of things because if they don't know about it, you get a low quality video, whereas you know how to do good lighting, scenes, editing and all that. So yeah, it will be really good and I think designers doing their own how to plays that they, they they just have a passion that comes across that me trying to do it i can't get quite that same passion behind it and so yeah that'll be cool to see uh so uh jade says i want to recommend clans of caledonia in my personal perspective better than terra mystica or scythe yeah, I mean, I've heard it's very similar to, to the both games. Um, I haven't tried them. Obviously, Terra Mystica, that kind of vaguely fantasy theme appeals more to me than the farming theme, but it does look really good. Um, so you've already received the Kickstarter. I, I, I was wondering, I haven't seen much of that coming into people yet, but I guess that's here in the UK. So obviously in Asia, um, the Kickstarter already landed. So it's good to know that that is good and that I'm right to be looking forward to it. Uh, 
uh, Adams said that he was in a D&D group with three Adams, so they got named after their alignments, which is interesting. Um, uh, all around the board is on, which is... Um, oh, why can I not reach name? Ah, oh, that's really annoying. I know your name. I know it. Ah. Uh, why can I not find name in my data banks? Ah. Uh, this is so annoying. Uh, it begins with a D. Uh. Darius, yes, Darius. I'm really sorry. Um, all around the board, uh, um, which is uh, who are doing Uncon. That so Darius is organising all of Uncon and stuff, which I, I've already mentioned. Going to be going to um, a week Saturday, so that's on the 28th. So looking forward to going to that. Um, and yeah, Darius has been really hugely supportive of the channel. I'm going to be doing a panel there about. Um, top 10 mechanics in games so that's not like just mechanics but it's specifically mechanics and how they're implemented in a specific game type thing so yeah welcome aboard Darius and joining us for the chat um so Adam says he'll rewatch anyway that'd be cool <laughs> oh we've also got Tom Heath from Slicker Drips which is another YouTube channel um, on so welcome Tom he, he does fantastic um, playthrough videos so if you're looking for playthroughs that's definitely a place to go and then he also does kind of first impression afterwards um, so it's nice to have him on um, doo -doo -doo. Farvalia okay okay thanks for that so Justin says Farvalia is how you pronounce it and I'm sure Chris uh, can confirm Firm, he says, Farvalias. Farvalias. Okay, got it. I will try and remember this. Um, so then Darius is saying, uh, Oh, I forgot about the new unlock scenarios. Excellent, cannot wait. Yeah, I can't wait either. I'm, as far as I'm aware, they're meant to be going straight into retail after Essen. And I'm hoping that is going to be the case. And I'll be picking it up. That's an instant buy for me. Uh, it's been one of my favourite games unlocked this year. Uh, so we're now having a big long discussion about how to pronounce Chris's game. Um, uh, we've got Lexi Lydon on as well. Hi Lexi. Um, is there anything that you'd want to see at Essen that isn't going to be there? Um, well, because I'm not going to be there, it's literally I've just been looking at what's releasing at Essen that I'll be able to pick up afterwards. I don't think there particularly is. I don't think there's anything that's been delayed past Essen. Although having said that, Charterstone, which is on the list, is releasing at Essen, but only because they've airshipped some. I'm not going to be getting my copy until like December, so that's a shame. Um, oh, Chris, Brian's got a head off. Thanks for joining us. It's really great to have had you on. Um, yeah, so as for isn't going to be there that I would want there, I, I don't think so, other than me myself to, <laughs> to be there. Um, yeah, I, I can't think of any games coming out soon that I'm like, oh, I wish it was going to be there. Is there any, Lexi, that you would, um, that you're interested in at the moment and you've seen aren't going to be at Essen that you would like to be? You know, let us know and we can talk about that too. Um, so uh, then Darius has asked, uh, you mentioned you are looking forward to Queen Domino. What makes King Domino part of your top 10? Um, a big part of it is how easy and approachable it is to play with still feeling involved and engaging for me as an experienced gamer. I, it can be played in as little as 15 minutes. It's so easy to set up, it's so easy to teach. Anyone will sit and play it, so that's really great to have. Uh, with King Domino and yeah it's pretty I mean the artwork on it is fantastic and you like all the different tiles even the ones for the same 
found me same terrain are different and they like slightly different and they're telling a little story which is i i just love little details like that so that's really cool um yeah i mean it's it's just i i really enjoy drafting as a mechanic and i really enjoy the fact that in this you have your draft determines your play order as well it just works really well it's one of these games that's just really elegant really well designed and approachable to everyone um so dara says they love the game but they don't know why maybe that's it maybe it's the ease of play the fact that you can just so easily play with anyone as well um at least that's it for me i mean i think i go into more detail in my review that i did of it and also in the top 10 video but um adam's asking uncon question mark so uncon's the convention that i'm going to on the 28th down in ramsgate um and all all around the board is actually a games club down there but they're also doing uncon the convention uh so we've got lots of buys to chris which is nice to see everyone chatting away together which is good um and as far as i can tell we've still got video going so that's great so obs definitely beats xsplit um Uh, Tom says I'm meant to be filming so I'm jumping in and out yeah I understand that um, obviously very busy kind of trying to do all the videos and stuff same way I am um, I was I was kind of meant to be filming my whistle stop videos making a start on those anyway today and yeah it didn't happen but <laughs> I, I decided to do this first instead so I spent the morning kind of well, I spent about an hour finalising the list. I started doing it yesterday. So I started planning to do this yesterday. And I did the list using Tabletop Together, uh, which is a website. Uh, Peter there does reviews and all sorts, which are really good. And I do recommend that you check out his work. He does a lot of great work. But he's also put together a tool for conventions for helping to find out what games are available for sale to help you organize what you're going to do where you're going to go and what their stand numbers and everything are it's absolutely fantastic tool sorry um so i went was using that yesterday going through all the list of all the games to sort out this for me um so yeah if anyone hasn't checked that out i have put a link in the description of this which i don't know if you can see until it actually has finished being live but um, if you need a link let me know and I'm sure I can sort one out for you um, then uh, Justin chip talk uh, the board one of my favorite things is when a game can capture the scope of and introduce a wider mechanic in an accessible way like King Domino yeah I think King Domino definitely does another good example of a game that manages to introduce a introduce drafting in a really accessible way is sushi go so yeah that's definitely if you like that kind of the drafting in king domino you'll probably really enjoy sushi go as well and it has that same light interesting artwork as well uh so chris at uh behind the box says we are going to be recording tonight got three videos to put together to be edited over the next few weeks i should tidy my table off <laughs> um yeah it probably helps uh but uh, yeah, so uh, Chris at Behind the Box is another YouTuber for anyone watching this. Um, I, he's not been going long. It's like a month or two, something like that, I think. Um, but him and his wife, Lindsay, uh, do it together. And yeah, I've been really enjoying their videos. They're doing like top games, like usually around three games in a subject. And the ones I've enjoyed most have been the how to solve these problems of gaming. Um, so yeah if you've not checked them out they're definitely one to have a look at um, I think soon though you're going to have to start upping your production values you know better lighting and stuff like that though actually as a starting channel your stuff's really well done um, so then uh, Justin sends I think revolving turn orders can be a little heady for newer players and the way your decisions impact that is a really cool way to introduce that yeah that's, a, that's something I haven't really considered um, of that being difficult for new players so yeah that's it's an interesting because obviously most older games like your monopolies and stuff that isn't a concept that exists there so yeah it does a very good job of introducing that as well Um, then chick talk so when you play something like power grid your choices affect turn order yeah that's that's a good good point 
Um, obviously, it does work very difficult uh, differently in Power Grid because it's not just about your choices, but you can. It's about how big your, how many cities you've got, and you can kind of use your choices to kind of impact that turn order really interestingly. Power Grid is a fantastic game, by the way. If you haven't played that, I really love that. Uh, Adam asks, "What will Uncon be a, uh, out exactly? I'm guessing that's about." Um, So yeah, uh, trying to think how to describe it. Um, I mean, it's largely going to be open gaming. There's going to be it's going to be a family friendly event. Is the main thing. It's going to be lots of families there, kids there. There's going to be Halloween uh, costume kind of thing. There's going to be little tournaments and stuff going. It's it's just kind of your small scale friendly local convention type thing. Um, it's not going to be exhibitors, although there is a couple of games exhibiting. Um, there's one which is uh, a horror theme one, I can't remember, that's like a deck builder, which I'm actually quite keen to check out, so that would be pretty cool. Um, but yeah, there's not much in the way of exhibitors and that sort of thing going, but it, it's only just really getting going and building up. Um, but I'm going to be there um, doing a panel along with um, the Broken Meeple, Luke Hector. Um, and oh, uh, I've just had confirmation the name of the game that's the deck builder is called Last One. So yeah, that's going to be there being demoed. So interesting that. I don't know if um, Darius can advise if there's anyone else demoing. I feel like there was. Uh, oh, Realm Master. Sorry, last one in is the deck builder. Last one in. Uh, yeah, Realm Master, I think, is also going to be demoing there. Correct me if I'm wrong, Darius, which is um, Joel's game. Yeah, he's confirmed, yeah, Realm Master. Um, uh, and then I've, I've lost track of where we are. Uh, so, uh, behind the box. Um, so, I've got Chris. Uh, I love... Domino for new players. We played it with my mum who doesn't play a lot and she wanted us to buy her a copy after two games. Yeah, it's a game that has that effect and the price point is so low that you easily can as well. Um, but I mean, even as not a new gamer, for me it's a game that I'll happily and play as a filler and even actually end up playing like game after game um, pretty much all through the night. Um, <laughs> And there's a bit of chat about reeling um, Chris's mum into gaming. Yeah, I think we all kind of do that, don't we? We're not in a kind of, wow, you will join us, one of us kind of way. Just in a, we share our interests and our hobby with those people around us. Like, I know I've got my wife's um, parents really into modern gaming. Not really into modern gaming, but into those lighter gateway games. And they've always been into board games, but it was things like uh, Absolute Boulder Dash and stuff like that, which I don't much like. Um, so I've just introduced them to games that they would have liked to play, but they just never knew were there. And then I've got other people, friends and relatives and stuff who never would have considered games and been like, games? Really? Board games? Um, and yeah it's just open I've been an eye opener to them of something that they just weren't aware of uh kabuki kid has joined us hello kabuki kid um welcome again uh, I can't, were you on the last one or you you no you were on last friday's weren't you you were on last friday's chat so welcome uh, if you've got any questions anyone of course do ask um, so chris has confirmed behind the box has been going for t uh, the last two months almost two months and uh, Adam confirms they make good videos. Oh, and as do I. Good. I'm glad to hear that. <laughs> I, I would assume you think so, otherwise you wouldn't be here, but you never know. Uh, you might be a glutton for punishment or something like that. Um, uh, so then Chris says, um, yeah, when we move, we're going to improve the production. Space is limited here and lighting is bad. Getting studio lights delivered this week. Oh, cool. So you are doing, you are moving into that. Yeah, I think that kind of two month point is a good kind of mark to judge. Do you enjoy doing it enough? Are you going to keep doing it enough to kind of then go, OK, let's invest a bit of money and up the game. 
um, anyone else who's looking to start a YouTube channel, I, what I always say is don't start with any investment, just use your mobile phone or whatever. That's the way to go about it. Um, but yeah, I'm very jealous of you moving to somewhere where you can actually have a studio set up. This is the kitchen, um, which you're probably aware of having watched various diaries videos and stuff. But that's, yeah, I, I don't have a dedicated space to record. I'd really love one, but uh, this doesn't pay much. And so I've got a tiny little house. Um, uh, what else we got? Uh, um, Adam said, welcome to the fold, Kabuki, you will never leave. And Kabuki <laughs> replied with, lol, sounds like a roach Mattel. Adam, thanks. <laughs> yeah, it does a bit. Um, come on, come on, one of us. <laughs> and then Adam's going to get a hooded robe. I have one if you need to borrow it. Yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll be wearing that at Uncon costume for Halloween. Um, and got Justin at Chick Talk. Modern games have become so much more. They create really wonderful experience and sometimes people don't even get bogged down by the idea of playing a game. I love that. Yeah, I would, I would agree. There's definitely different games um, for different people. And it's just a matter, I think, I'm, I'm not gonna say everyone loves board games because there are people who board games aren't going to appeal to but for the majority of people it's just a matter of finding the game that does appeal to them i would say and yeah some some games just have you, you don't feel like you're playing a game time just flies by it's all just about that interaction joy and happiness and for someone like me who has a lot of social anxiety and social difficulties being able to sit and play a game and have social interaction in that way is a real like lifesaver almost it just the fact that you can just fall into the comfort of that game and just the kind of playing of it it just puts you in such a relaxed state that you, it's, it's not you're socializing it's just you're playing a game you're with other people you're having fun and that's what everyone kind of wants to do when they're socializing but people like me struggle to do that and games give us a structure with which to do that in uh so uh what else we got um so darius is recommending adam uh search for the facebook event yeah that's got lots more um details actually so that would definitely be a good good bet i i've shared it a few times so you you might be able to find it that way if you're struggling but otherwise yeah just do a search and you should find it easy enough uh, Unique Geeks has joined us. Hello, welcome aboard. Uh, sorry, it's taken a while to get to that comment. I'm a bit bit behind on the chat. I'm trying to get all caught up. Um, oh yeah, Adam's not really on Facebook much. Uh, much more Twitter, aren't you? Uh, so Chris said, uh, absolutely, based on the first couple of months, they know it's something they're going to keep going with, which I think is great because I've been really enjoying their channel and their content. Um, one day we'll buy a good camera too. Yeah, I mean, that was, it was about six months in that I bought my HDR camera. And I don't know that I'd class it as a good camera, but it's certainly a better camera than my phone. Well, actually, no, it's, it's equally good as my phone camera, um, actually. But my previous phone, I've got a new phone now, but my previous phone, um, the camera stopped working and that forced me to make that decision at six months. And I'd kind of planned not to do any heavy investment like that until like a year in. But it all worked out, so, or at least it's working out. I, I don't know, it's not over yet, so I can't really class that. Life still goes on and so does the channel. Um, Kabuki Kid asks, what kind of lighting do you use? Um, what I'm actually going to do is I'm just going to pick up a laptop and protect your eyes as I turn it around to show you the lights. You might get a bit blinded. So you can see that's one of them. So there's two of those. And what I do is I point them away from me just to kind of bounce off the walls and back. And that way, hopefully providing, well, that way reducing glare on my glasses primarily. 
um, and glare on game components as well is a big thing um, because a lot of cards you know don't have linen finish they're a bit shiny and it's quite easy for you to get glare on those so what I do is I try to have that set up um, so basically shiny surfaces you're not getting glare but everything's really nicely well lit ideally I would like a third overhead camera that um, kind of points down at the backdrop and creates a more three-dimensional effect and that's kind of the advised professional setup to use um, and actually they advise having the lights pointing across across you but as I say I don't do that because that creates too much glare I find um, so I've gone for this but this I felt like it just creates a lot more light and I, I Bad lighting is something that when I'm watching other people's videos, I always notice. And I'm always like, I wish your lighting was better. Um, shaky cams is another thing that kind of gets on my nerves. Um, so these are things that when I set out, I set out, I want to do these right. And it's taken time, but I think I'm kind of getting there. With the live stuff like we're doing now, I, I've also set out that I want to do that right. Now, obviously, it's not going great because the camera, we've got flickiness. I don't want that. Um, I didn't want the kind of, I didn't want the freezing and stuff that was happening. But this, this is all it is. It comes down to testing. This is my third live show ever without any other experience. And I think I'm doing a good job. Um, I think the software I'm using, the OBS software that was recommended is really good and is helping, which Chris recommended. So thanks for that. But also I think I'm putting in the effort to set things up ahead of time to try and make it the best that it can be. Things like I've got my credits queued up, I've got things queued up ready to go and images and different scenes and stuff ready. And that's what I wanna do when I'm coming into going to live plays. And what I'm doing so much of this live stuff for is getting myself used to it, ready for doing live plays. And I wanna be doing kind of a weekly live play um, that will be probably lighter games, maybe the occasional live play with a heavier game. Ideally, I'd like to do that with other people here, but that's not going to happen. So what I'm going to be trying to do is doing it with the audience and having audience participation. Um, so we'll see how that goes in the future. Obviously, as I say, I want to improve the channel. I want to make the channel everything it can be. And part of that is why I've ordered a webcam, um, because I don't feel this camera does a good enough job for starters but I don't want to fully invest in one go. Um, however, the, the biggest issue with this camera is it, cannot, it can't be adjusted to look at the table. So that's a no-go for doing live plays. So I've ordered a webcam to try and improve that. Um, sorry. Right, uh, where were we, where were we, where were we? Oh, I've missed loads of chat. I've gone off, gone off on one. That's a problem. Uh, so, what kind of lighting do you use from Kabuki Kick? Have you thought about becoming a contributor for the Dice Tower? Maybe a segment on one of their shows? Uh, yes, I have. I contacted them. They said they have no interest in me at all. It was that simple. Um, yeah. <laughs> that they're not interested in me. Um, I've spoken to many Dice Tower contributors who say all that happens from contributing to the Dice Tower is that you grow the Dice Tower. You don't grow yourself, you don't help yourself. I'm trying to do this, so I'm not upset about the fact that I'm on not on the Dice Tower is what I'm trying to come to with this. Um, because I'm trying to do this as my channel, I need it to be generating an income for me, not for them. And that's just, not going to be happening. I know that there is an exception to this, which is the rules girl. Um, and basically what they've set up is they're getting paid to make videos, ridiculous amounts of money to make videos by publishers. And then they're putting them on the dice tower and only on the dice tower, but they are a rare case. And yeah, I, I, I'm not going to go into that any further, I think. Uh, Kabuki says, uh, Kid says, I think I see a ceiling fan shadow. Um, I'm not sure what you could be seeing as a ceiling fan shadow. What you could have possibly seen was my uh, light, the actual room light, which if I tilt, 
there you go that's what you might have seen so probably it was that anyway um, then Justin says uh, I use a DSLR and a webcam for my videos and it's honestly the cheapest way to start I'd actually describe that the cheapest way to start is just using your mobile phone or what you have available already if you already have a DSLR which you're saying you did that's kind of why it then works out cheapest but you definitely you don't need to go out and buy stuff when you're starting out because so many people do it for a month and then just go actually this is more work than I realized it was going to be it's not enough value add to me and give up on it really so uh, Chris then said yeah we will look to get an older model secondhand DSLR see I avoided DSLR personally because I wanted something that was much simpler to use much more push and play that's what it came down to for me and so that's why I use a Sony HDR camera because it is literally push and play you can do a bit with settings but it's nowhere near as complex as a DSLR uh, so Chip Talk says the DSLR is the best bang for your buck you don't need anything more than that unless you're making films haha <laughs> yeah I mean my Sony camera was about the same as a DSLR so it both are kind of doable really uh, Kabuki Kid, what is the game you sat down to play just knowing you were going to hate it and you ended up really having fun? Um, it's a difficult question. I've had it go the other way, but those sort of occurrences tend to not stay in my head so much um, that I'm able to just easily recall them. Um, I can't really think of any that I expected to love and hate it. I mean, I think there were definitely times that I expected to love the game and it was actually, eh, it's okay. But whether that was my understanding of the game, etc., or just my mood, I don't know. Um, with regards to, I thought I was going to hate it and then ended up loving it. Yeah, I can't think of that happening. Largely because if I don't... If, largely because if I think I'm going to hate a game I'm not going to be sitting down to play it um, there's definitely exceptions to that like I'm not keen on social deduction games but I wouldn't say that I hate them is the thing so I, I can have the odd bit of fun occasionally if the mood just happens to be right and the game just happens to be right with the right people with those so that's probably the closest thing so you're talking like one night ultimate werewolf um, that kind of thing that's probably the closest I would say for that um, so what we got next uh, Kabuki Kid then asks um, what about the inverse yeah I think I already covered um, what game I that I don't really think there have been any particularly that I love and were a bomb just more not quite as good as I would have liked maybe um, yeah I, I, I don't think there's particularly many that come to mind for that really uh, da, da, da. Uh, Adam says he does exist on Facebook he just doesn't post so much oh fair enough and then Darius is saying so game talk I think I recall seeing a post that you weren't fond of time stories um, you're right I wasn't uh, yeah I, it was a while ago that I played it I only played Asylum I felt that there was not going into any spoilers there was something in the game which I felt was not made very clear about in the rules and the wording was poor and that caused a lot of problems I didn't like the repetitiveness of going through the same cards to get the stuff that you already knew about and it's like I've just got to go through yeah you've just got to go through and redo it and it was a bit boring that so I didn't like that um, Otherwise, I quite like the idea and the concept. It just felt it would have worked better as a computer game, which there already are those kind of things out there. Um, I mean, they were really common in the 90s, I think it was, where you had these kind of uh, click and move games, and that's pretty much what it is. And I think it works better that way. Uh, so Justin says... Uh, 
Uh, Justin tried to post a link. Uh, yeah, links don't work in the chat, unfortunately. Um, but you can send it to him on Twitter or Facebook or whatever. Um, I'm sure that'll be fine for Chris. Uh, Kabuki Kid says the lighting looks good. Thank you. Yeah, I mean, it was a great deal. Um, so that was good to be able to pick that up so cheaply. And it was just through Amazon, picking it up from abroad, all arrived, really good service. I, I had a bit of worry about going without going for branded and stuff. And, you know, there can be a bit of a reputation with the whole China fakes and stuff that you're getting a subpar product. But I've not had that experience, so that's pretty good. Uh, sorry, I missed you going, Justin. Uh, have a good day. Uh, enjoy the rest of your work day anyway. Um... Oh, Kabuki Kid, uh, the camera flickering effect. Yes, um, I think it's because of the webcam. It struggles with light levels. Um, so I either have to have poor lighting on me or have it with that slight flicker. Um, which you kind of have to look for to see, but it can be a bit distracting. So yeah, I'm sorry about that. That's, I'm not sure what I'm gonna be able to do about that in the short term because I'm not gonna have enough cameras to have one looking at the table, one looking at me without spending another, you know, however much to get another webcam. Um, and I think it'll have to be a reasonably good webcam to avoid such issues. And I can't really play around with settings and stuff on this, hopefully though in the future that'll get better um, or maybe what I'll choose to do is just have poorer lighting on me because let's face it I don't matter um, but how I'll manage to get the game well lit and me not well lit I don't really know uh, then what we have uh, Kabuki Kig yeah I expected to dislike all it owns and end up buying it the next day that's actually one that I expected to really like because I love deck builders and everyone was like it's like a deck builder but with a bag and it's absolutely fantastic but for me it just felt really dry and I don't know if it was just the mood I've only played it once and yeah um, I don't think I even finished the game so yeah it was it just kind of fell down a hole for me that one uh, Unique Geek says, I see you're selling the Seventh Continent after not long owning it. Did it not live up to the hype for you? I personally have no interest in playing it. Um, well, I will have a review coming out soon. Um, but yeah, I have already sold it. But I did play well over 20 hours of play. So it's not like I've gone, played it once, thrown it away. Um, I And I think it is an immense game. It just, it wasn't what I wanted from a game, especially that I could get that amount of money for selling again. Um, so I chose to do that. Uh, Kabuki Kid. I also didn't think I would like Power Grid, but I end up loving that one. Yeah, I think Power Grid, I wanted to try and I didn't expect to love it as much as I did. Largely because it has um, auctions. It has that bidding auctions in it, and I'm not keen on that in games. So I expected to not really love it, and for it just to be an, oh, that's an okay game. But it's an absolutely great game, Power Grid. Um, so that's one that it, it wasn't extremes of expected to hate, loved, but yeah, it comes close to that sort of thing, really. Um, Darius says, you'll have to play Werewolves and Miller's ho Hollow Uncom with our crew. Yeah, I suppose I can do that. Um, I think um, Werewolves and Miller's Hollow is the prequel to One Night Ultimate Werewolf. I would suggest um, that you get hold of One Night Ultimate Werewolf if you like Werewolves and Miller's Hollow. I think it is a better game. Um, I don't know what anyone else on the chat, if they would agree. Um, I just think the, the big issue I found with Werewolves of Miller's Hollow is that once you're out, the game then just carries on and you've got this big long downtime with people sat out not playing. Whereas One Night Ultimate Werewolf solves that because you just do single rounds, but it still manages, it manages to condense it into these single rounds that are interesting. You just do multiple of them to get the same kind of a feel. That, that's my opinion. Um, 
Then Adam says, for me, I just eventually part with games. I don't get to play my favorite game to play is XCOM with my partner. Yeah, I mean, obviously doing the channel, I'm buying a lot of games, playing a lot of games. So I'm having to sell a lot of games as well. It's kind of the flip side of doing that. Um, with regards to XCOM, I think I've played it a long time ago. I'm not a big real time game person. So that's my issue with XCOM, frankly. Um, I, I won't play XCOM for that reason. I, I, it gives me like palpitations, makes me really anxious and stuff. So, sorry, I just need a drink. Um, oh, did we crash, Adam says. Okay, um, let me just have a look. I don't think we have crashed. Um, it says it's still working. As far as I can tell, everything looks like it's working. So I don't know. You'll have to let me know um, if it is, if it has stopped working or not. Um, so then Kabuki Kid says, do you enjoy the escape room type games? Any favorites to recommend? Yes, I love them. Um, if, if you've not seen the top 10 list part of this video yet. Um, number one, the most anticipated game from Essen 2017 is the new free box set of Unlock. So I absolutely love them. And Unlock is my favorite. I did a comparison video between Unlock and Exit the Game, um, having played all three of the Exit the Games at that point. There are more coming and I'll be buying those as well because both of those I think are really good but I do prefer Unlock and that's the one I'd recommend. I think it's more accessible. The puzzles aren't as good, but the gameplay and the accessibility and the smoothness of it for me is better. And I go into a lot more detail and stuff as well. Um, then Darius says, I completely understand what you may uh, mean. Oh, I've lost the chat. Um, I completely understand what you mean. Well, I've lost it again. There we go. Uh, we played the second Time Stories last night and wasn't as impressed. Yeah, I think that's common with the Time Stories. Um, some people like some of the stories over others. Um, I think the second one was the one where it went a bit more combat heavy and that put a lot of people off. Uh, so yeah, I mean, I only played the first one and it was just, yeah, it just wasn't good enough for me. Um, I, d I do really want a really good narrative game but I think it's going to be hard to get that from a board game. Basically, I want a physical GM to do a game for me, uh, but I don't have a GM local to me anymore, which is a shame. Uh, thanks for being on, Chris. I've probably missed saying goodbye. Uh, send best wishes to Lindsay, and I hope you enjoy your dinner. Uh, Kabuki Kid says, are you dropping frames or is there an issue on my end? Um, I probably am dropping frames. I've got it on the lowest possible um, latency to try and avoid that. But yeah, I'm going to be dropping frames occasionally. Um, I think I, I upgraded to Fiber, which has meant that this is possible but ideally this needs to be a faster <laughs> internet connection. Um, if I had a faster internet connection, it would be much better. The, the key issue is the upload speed is the killer. And obviously that's how you're getting the feed. So for me on the screen, it all looks fine. But you watching the feed, there's going to be stuff dropping that I'm just not aware of. Um, which is a shame. I don't think there's really much I'm going to be able to do about that. I've upgraded to the fastest I can possibly get, so I would have to move. Um, within the UK, the, really the, the only option uh, to get a faster connection than what I have would be to move somewhere with like Virgin Media and get a cabled connection direct to the house and Moving isn't an option, frankly. We don't have enough money for that. Um, so then Adam says, did we crash? Um, oh yeah, so we had that chat. Hope, 
thankfully we haven't. Kabuki had said it seems to be working, but it was acting up for a bit there. So it probably went a bit worse um, than it has been. But yeah, I think th this is all going pretty well. So I'm pretty happy with how it's been going. Um, Darius said he'll have to head off. Yeah, uh, bye Darius. I look forward to seeing you uh, week Saturday at Uncon in Ramsgate. Really looking forward to that. Um, and yeah, we'll probably chat before then as well. Um, I still need to do my top 10 list ready for the panel. I will get it done. It might be in the car on the way there, but I will get it done. Uh, so yeah, it seems we're losing quite a few people now. Uh, I'm not sure how many people we still have on watching. Um, I'm not sure, does it tell me? I'm not sure it does tell me how many people are on. So uh, I know we've still got Kabuki Kid. So as long as we've got like one person. I, I thought previously it was telling me, but um, maybe it's the difference between doing it in an event. Oh, maybe if I click analytics. Ah, analytics. Uh, so it says I've currently got three viewers. So there we go. There are apparently three people still on. So we've got Kabuki Kid, Adam and probably picking up me um, but that's fine it's it's the quality of the people not the quantity obviously uh, Kabuki Kid loves Unlock 2 yeah I mean they're really good <laughs> yeah I mean if you want to watch the list do um, if you want a summary I can just give you a quick summary in case you wanted to ask any questions about any of the games on there um, oh and we're losing Adam all right, bye Adam. Um, so it's just you and me, K Kabuki Kid, to the end. Um, and Kabuki said, unrelated to game, are you a Blade Runner fan? Did you see the new movie? Do you plan to? Um, I don't go to the cinema because it's too expensive. I maybe let myself see one or two movies a year. Um, just save money, really. Blade Runner definitely is not on my priorities to see I've I know I watched the movie the original but I don't really remember it um, it was not one that's particularly stuck in my mind it's kind of like a yeah it was an all right film so not hugely interested in it I guess uh, as you brought it up you probably are interested but uh, if you want to talk about that more we can um, And Kabuki says, may have lost some when it acted up. Um, yeah, possibly. I think uh, we might have lost uh, Unique Geeks um, was on. So I think we've lost Unique Geeks, which might have been when it was acting up. I think everyone else has just kind of gradually left uh, because they've had to go do work and whatnot, which is perfectly fine. I mean, a lot of people have been on like an hour and a half, so I'm pleased that they've been on at all let alone stayed on uh then we've got g Wong. hi hi g Wong. uh what city are you in in the uk um nearest city is oxford um so i'm in oxfordshire you do love and kabuki says i do love blade runner but i don't expect everyone to yeah i mean that's that's the appropriate attitude to have i i, I don't get people who are like I love something, everyone must love it. Or, you know, my opinion is the only opinion that matters in life. Life's too short for such conflict for no reason, really. Oh. Okay, so I'm finally, for the first time in this video, caught up on the chat, which is, to my mind, that's, that's what I want from these. I want to be kept busy, kept talking, and hopefully be entertaining while I'm doing that. Uh, so, hi, hi G. Um, so, if you have any questions, uh, either Kabuki Kid or G, um, I think you're kind of both on. So, you, I think you're the only people on. So, if you have any questions, whether it be about Essen or the list for Essen or anything else, uh, just let me know. Uh, so, G Wong, I, I watched the UK game show from you before. Where was that? Um, as in the quiz show, that was Aircon. Um, Aircon do a quiz there every year, which is in Harrogate. Um, and I will be going back there again. Um, I think that's fantastic convention. 
and I recommend people to go to it definitely um, yeah uh, so Harrogate is in Yorkshire I think uh, it's up north somewhere anyway <laughs> that's probably probably uh, enough um, but yeah that that's March 17th I think around then uh, it's in March if you look up aircon you'll be able to find out more but I highly recommend going to that uh, Lexi Lydon uh, hi welcome back on I think we had you on earlier uh, I don't know if you dropped potentially um, when apparently there was a bit of issues going on which might cause you to drop but glad you're back um, there seems to be a few video game to board game conversions is there one you'd like to see Ooh. yeah I mean it's definitely something that's happening a lot um, I don't know that there's any I have enjoyed so far well it depends what you class by video game there's been app to board game conversions that I've enjoyed uh, primarily Vikings Gone Wild I, I really enjoy that game um, other way around I probably wouldn't know if it was a board if it was a computer game a lot of the time uh, because I'm not a big computer game person I it's just the expense of all the consoles like my Xbox broke and I'm talking Xbox not uh, well it was Xbox 360 not Xbox One or anything was like the last console I had and that broke and I've not replaced it um, so I don't think that um, yeah I don't think there's any I'd be particularly aware of one that my wife would like um, definitely from like talking old school computer games is Theme Park um, which we were hoping pardon me, which we were hoping unfair would be but it just didn't kind of managed to achieve that for me um which is a shame i'm just trying to think if there's any computer games that i really really loved growing up that i'd like to see see most of them it was like platform games or racing games or things like that and i don't think they translate to board games very well and i don't think i'd necessarily want them to be a board game um, are there any that you think should be? Maybe let us know and we can talk about that. Uh, so Lexi agrees about Aircon. Yeah, it's in in Yorkshire and it's awesome. Yeah, I, I agree. Um, like, I had been thinking that I preferred UKGE after going to Aircon. And then I went back to UKGE after going to Aircon. And it was like, the environment at Aircon is just so much nicer. The feel of it and stuff. Uh, that yeah, Aircon is my favourite convention at the moment. So we have three people on. So we've got G, Kabuki Kid, and Lexi. So welcome, you hardcore fans, you. Um, and Kabuki Kid asks, do you like games that use paragraph books, stuff like Near and Far, Smirsh, or Tales of Arabian Nights? Yes and no. Um, Tales of Arabian Nights didn't have enough actual game to me. Uh, for me, it just felt like interactive storytelling, purely that with no game there. Um, I'm not sure I've tried Smirsh. Near and far, I'm playing at the moment, um, but I haven't really played enough to formulate a full opinion on. Um, but I've only played the kind of standalone single on its own, not the campaign stuff yet. Um, so I'm hoping I'll enjoy it more when I get into the campaign stuff. But above and below, which uses a paragraph book, I absolutely love. I love the fact that this has story and it has game. I like the game that's there. I do badly at it every time because I kind of sacrifice the game for the purpose of um, just going and doing the adventuring. But uh, yeah, I think that's probably my favorite of the paragraph books so far. The paragraph book games is definitely near, uh, is definitely above and below. Uh, Ji Wong asks, I played StarCraft board game. I've not played it. Um, I never actually played StarCraft either, though. I uh, played World of Warcraft. I'd be tempted to play the board game of that. Um, but I 
not convinced it would actually be that good. So kind of have two minds of that. I've heard StarCraft is actually a very good game. Both the computer game and the board game, actually. Um, but it's actually kind of a grail game now. It's very hard to get. Um, and yeah, I, I don't know why I've never really... Sorry, my nose is going crazy here. Uh, um, I don't know why I've never got round to kind of playing that one. But uh, yeah, I've heard a lot of good stuff about it. Oh, although G saying it was way too long and complicated. Well, um, yeah, I mean, I can imagine so. There's a lot of components to it in a big box, so I'm not surprised to hear that. Um, I guess it's just different tastes. Probably the people who, who it's a grail game for and make a big deal about it, they probably love that kind of long play for eight hour type game like the Twilight Imperium and stuff whereas I don't really want to sit and play a single game for that long personally um, Lexi says theme park or theme hospital would be great yeah I, I agree um, apparently uh, da, 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 Dice Hospital um, I spoke to Caesar in London who's the um, publisher for Dice Hospital which I think is still on Kickstarter but I spoke to him um must have been about a month ago, uh, just before his Kickstarter went live anyway for that, and was saying about a lot of his inspiration for that game was Theme Hospital. So that may well be Theme Hospital, the board game. Um, however, he couldn't get the license. He, he did look into it, but he couldn't get the license. Yeah, there was a lot of loops to go, a lot of hoops to jump through and stuff, and it was just too difficult with all the different parties involved in the licensing and stuff. Um, but yeah, so that, that might be one for you to take a look at. Um, I would have thought, I, I would have thought Caesar would be at Aircon, so by the sounds of it, you're going to be there. Um, so you'll be, he'll probably by that point have, I would expect probably production copies being demoed maybe, because I think he's due to ship in July. Um, so you'll be able to test it out and it's, it's one that's going to go into retail, so if that sounds of any interest. Uh, Kabuki Kid, technically Space Empires 4X is from a video game. Okay, I didn't know that. Um, I, was like, I, I did say I probably wouldn't know if a lot of board games come from computer games, so. Uh, G1 has also mentioned Dice Hospital. Um, and oh, there's frames dropping. I'm, I'm really sorry about the frames dropping, guys. Um, as I say, I think that comes down to the internet connection and I don't think there's really anything I'm gonna be able to do to improve that. But hopefully it's not bad enough that you're not able to get the gist at least or the to be able to understand the vague meaning of what I, it is I'm saying. Uh, so Lexi said Dice Hospital does seem to have a bit of Theme Hospital as an influence backed it but not played it yet yeah yeah as I say the, the designer did say that was a big influence um, Theme Hospital so um, I got um, a demo of it at UK Games Expo but I didn't actually get to play it which was a shame um, and I almost got a review copy, but I wasn't going to be able to produce a review in time for the Kickstarter because uh, this was when I met him in person and there was only two weeks and I, I just couldn't get it played and done in that time, which is a shame. Um, it's definitely a game that I'm interested in. I haven't backed it just because I don't really back Kickstarters at the moment because I need immediate reward for the money. I, well, I say immediate reward. I need it to be immediately funneled to be content for the channel. So I can't really afford to put money into Kickstarters. Um, I, I would really like to support a lot more games on Kickstarter and there are games that I'm having to buy second hand that were on Kickstarter now and play pay slightly more to do so. But it means I've not had the money sat there for potentially two years. Um, but yeah, it's kind of frustrating. Uh, G would like to have a hospital themed game but hates dice don't know if there's a better one out there all the dice all the hospital themed games I know of are dice games um, I wonder why that is <laughs> yeah I can't think of a single hospital themed game 
uh, that I know of and have played anyway that isn't like dice focused um, so obviously there's a, a gap in the market there maybe you should design one have you considered that G uh, making a game I, I don't know kind of what would you do for a non dice hospital game we could have maybe worker placement but then dice placement is what a lot of games work off um, I don't know what what do you guys think should be in there got a few people on maybe you have some opinions on it uh Kabuki kid has to run uh yeah thanks thanks for being on Kabuki kid completely understand um yeah flatline is another hospital game dice theme dice in there though yeah every every single one i can think of has dice in uh lexi Lydon. yeah there are so many kickstarters it's making me more choosy about why i back now and as a result i back less you're not the only one there is major as industry-wide there is major kickstarter fatigue going on at the moment because there are just so many games i mean yesterday alone um i was aware of eight games yesterday alone <laughs> that launched on kickstarter in one day and that's just astounding and that's at a time when it's bad to be launching games because of s and people are tight on money and stuff and then you talk the peak time and yeah that there was a discussion in one of the facebook groups i'm in about has kickstarter changed and i don't think it's that kickstarter's changed i think it's people are fatigued and it's simply so many games on there um and part of it for me is as i say i can't afford to have money held up and i'm still waiting on games that i backed two years plus ago um that just run late and late and late and it just makes you not want to back anymore and it's a real shame especially because it had been for quite a while now being mostly used and the most successful kickstarters by people who did not need to use it they were simply going i don't want to risk my company's money and it was companies not just these individual small publishers but what kickstarter should be there for is those small publishers but sadly um yeah i mean it's it's become less about them and more of a pre-ordering service and that's put people off as well and then people look at these smaller publishers games which otherwise wouldn't exist without kickstarter and that's what kickstarter's there for and they go, this doesn't match up to these other games I've seen on Kickstarter or seeing on Kickstarter. And that makes people then not back those. And so it's become very difficult to tell what will and won't fund. Um, a big part of it seems to be what channels you manage to get on. I mean, I, I'm, in, I'm not delusional. I know me doing videos for a game isn't gonna equal that fund, but it might show the game in its best light which is what i try and do in my videos whereas you get on things like man v me paul rado less so rado even these days because he does so many um people are fatigued by him and his videos but you know you get on the bigger channels it can make a big difference to the success but even now it, even then now that does not guarantee success and it, it's just become such a kind of random shot in the dark to know whether or not a game is going to fund. Uh, but yeah, um, Lexi says, also there are a plethora of big price tag games that seem to edge out the smaller games. Yeah, I think that's become more and more common as well. I mean, the first huge price tag game probably was, or at least that I was aware of, was Kingdom Death Monster. And I don't think anything's quite come close to that. But there's definitely been games that have been, and like the Call cool Mini or Not ones, with all the add-ons and more and more. It, it, it's mostly the miniatures ones. But all of them are getting more and more expensive, more and more. We need to throw more in there to get people's attention. And it's less that people, the publishers know less people are going to back their games. They, they've been watching the market. These publishers are quite savvy people. They're, they're what, intelligent people for a lot of part of it. And they know less people are backing games. So therefore, the way to get more money is to have a higher price tag but if you're going to have a higher price tag you have to have more stuff to justify it and i think a lot of games are getting needlessly kind of shoved full of stuff 
that almost to many ways makes the game unplayable and ruins the game or at the very least makes it a ridiculously expensive game for what would be a lovely charming lower price game um yeah g says i stopped doing kickstarters from unknown publishers yeah and I, I don't think you're the only one because there were so many known publishers that you could go for and then you don't have the risk so that's what people started doing and when you've got the choice of game from unknown publisher game from known publisher launching same day costing similar amounts you know which one you're going to go for and so yeah I, I don't think that's a fault of anyone i don't think it's a fault of consumers it's just the evolution of that kind of marketing tool uh, well i say marketing tool that sales avenue and that's what it comes down to it is it's been used as a sales avenue rather than as a crowdfunding um to ensure things that otherwise wouldn't happen but i can't comment because i used it to crowdfund my channel <laughs> i i didn't get much um and i didn't ask for much but i still did it and I'll probably still do it again unless things change a lot in the next six months. So, oh, right. Uh, so I think we've got G and Lexi still on. Uh, do you guys have any questions for me? Anything you'd like me to answer? And while I wait to see if chat has frozen or if you have anything else or if there is actually anyone else on um, who wants to kind of ask any questions or anything uh, just let me know and I'll just give it a minute to see probably gonna have to end soon because I'm running out of water and my throat is dry um, talking for this long is really difficult on the throat you, I suppose in general life you just don't do it that often to notice and even when I'm doing the recording it tends to not be such uh, long continuous talking it's you know do a take, do a take, have a drink. And you know, it's much more split out than this continuous talk. Uh, so Lexi said, and I backed your campaign and will do again, as that's one of the really good things about Kickstarter. Thank you for backing. Um, have you voted in the poll? Because I, I don't know, people watching this might not be aware. Uh, people who back the Kickstarter get to vote on a game. Um, so I'd be interested to know, Le Lexi, what games you voted for if you have voted on the poll. Um, and yeah, as I say, I can't thank my backers enough because without them I wouldn't be doing this. It's as simple as that. I needed to have enough money to cover the costs at the very least. I do this full time. I didn't make, like, I'm not making a living doing this yet. But because of the Kickstarter, because of people like Lexi and G back to you know it's because of you people that i'm here i'm doing this live chat and i'm able to do this and so i can't say how thankful i am and obviously the only other person who's equally um kind of supportive and made that happen is my wife so who uh worries about the paying of the bills and whatnot while i squander away our our hard earned well her hard earned money Um, so G, I mean, G or Lexi, if either of you have done the uh, poll, um, if you want to talk about that, um, or if you want to talk about uh, games you're anticipating from Essen, obviously that was the main focus of this, or any other questions, uh, then I'd be excited to talk about those. Um, so G said, I voted for Haunt the House and Dino the Island. I don't think Haunt the House is releasing yet. I think that's only on Kickstarter at the moment. I might be wrong. Um, so that definitely won't be possible until maybe when it comes out, that might then be um, possible. Uh, Dino Island, is that the one with all the bright colored, like 80s uh, art? Um, that's not one I, I, I say it's not one I'm interested in. The gameplay looks fantastic. I love Jonathan Gilmore as a designer, um, but it's that art oh, just puts me off so badly. But yeah, I mean, if that wins the poll, I'll, I'll go out and buy it. That's de that's definitely releasing at uh, Essen, so and should be in retail, I think. Uh, Lexi then said, "I did, and I know I voted for Gloomhaven, which I love, and a couple of others that I'd like to see your thoughts on." Um, yeah, I'm kind of hoping Gloomhaven does win. 
uh, oh, I'm wanting to do videos for that. Uh, I've bought someone's second hand, uh, well, I've, I've bought someone's second edition pledge. So they've pledged, but they've not received it yet um, because they're playing someone else's copy still from first edition. So they backed this to play solo, but they've decided since backing it that um, they won't actually get around to doing a solo playthrough of it while they're still playing multiplayer on the other copy especially. So I've bought someone else's, so I will be doing at some point Gloomhaven videos, hopefully. It'll just be a matter of when, and if it wins the poll, I'll definitely do a full series, um, which will be interesting because the how to play on that is going to be hefty. D. Although uh, Paul already did a fantastic how to play, I've heard. I've not actually watched it because I've avoided watching it because I haven't got the game, frankly. Um, but uh, yeah, Paul um, at Gaming Rules uh, already did a how to play. So I'll probably still do one if it wins the poll, but um, because that's the whole nature of the poll, people want to see that, see the whole thing, and do playthrough. But yeah, I'm, I'm excited by Gloomhaven. Um, I have a history of playing d and I love that kind of dungeon crawl RPG stuff. Um, so I'm excited to see whether Gloomhaven will deliver for me and work for me in a way that so many other games have fallen short of doing. Uh, Lexi says, it might seem daft, but I only played my first Euro this week. Great Western Trail. Well, that's a fantastic one to start with. A bit of a heavy one to start with, mind. Um, I mean, yeah, I mean, using the term Euro is, is a difficult thing to say, because I'm sure you've probably played games that other people would class as a Euro, or I might class as Euro, because they're not that... <sighs> They're not very firm definitions, really. I mean, traditionally, Euro just meant a game from Europe. And you would have played, like, Ticket to Ride or Small World or so many other games that were designed and made in Europe. And they're Euros, officially. But they're not what people kind of think of as Euros. Whereas I think the Great Western Trail is one that definitely falls into that. And I absolutely love it. Um, I think Great Western Trail is a fantastic game. I tend not to keep games that take a long time to play, which Great Western Trail does. But yeah, that's one I've kept. And it's it's what I would class as a Sunday afternoon game where you just take your time with it and enjoy the experience. Pardon me. Uh, G said, haven't got time to read about uh, Essen this year. Just too lazy and see if I can pick up some news here. Uh, so what do we have this year? Well, there's a ridiculous... A ridiculous number of games. Um, what I did is I went through the uh, tabletop together tool um, and just went through the games going interested not interested interested not interested type thing to make my list. Um, obviously if you go back to the beginning of the video you'll be able to watch the full list of my thoughts on it but in summary there was at number, at number 10 uh, Gaia Project which is the like sci-fi re-theme of pardon me, of Terra Mystica. Uh, number nine, there is Ca Clans of Caledonia, which is like a farming kind of with features of Terra Mystica and Scythe and stuff like that game. Uh, Keeper was on my list, which um, is part of the Key series of games. And I quite enjoyed Key Flower, uh, which was a Euro game with kind of a bidding mechanic kind of thing going on, worker placement, um, but it just wasn't quite good enough for me to go out and get when other people in my game group had it. But uh, yeah, so that one's of interest. Um, number seven here on my list is Noria, which has absolutely lovely artwork, fantastic theme of this like fantasy setting with flying, magical flying ships and stuff. L looks fantastic. Uh, it combines apparently deck building and bag building, pool building, so I'm really interested. I like those mechanics and I'm interested in that. Uh, Farvalias um, by Chris Bryan Games. Sorry, by Chris Bryan is the um, 
designer, WizKids is the publisher, is one I'm interested in uh, purely because I've been kind of seeing that for a long time coming because I follow Chris Bryan, um, his weekly news segment, um, so he mentions it occasionally. Um, Harvest from Tiny, um, from Tasty Minstrel Games is my number five, which I'm interested in because I really love Harbour. Uh, number four was Queen Domino, which King Domino's my number 10 game of all time, so that's on there for that. Uh, number three was Pandemic Legacy Season 2. Uh, the number two is Charterstone, and number one was Unlock Mystery Adventures. So, uh, yeah, that was kind of my top 10. I did have kind of shortlist I can also go through if you guys are interested in hearing that. Uh, Lexi said, didn't find it too heavy or crunchy, lots going on, but keeps it light, tight and fun. Yeah, I would agree. Um, it's it's a game, well, I don't know, I think there is a lot of components, there's a lot of moving stuff to be aware of, but as you say, it just kind of flows and works, but it does take a long time to play. Um, so as we've not got any more questions I might as well uh, let you guys know what my kind of other I kind of had a short list of 10 that didn't make the main list um, on top of kind of other things you can look at really for Essen but uh, on there this is in no particular order uh, the Palace of Mad King Ludwig by Bezier Games so the castles of Mad King Ludwig I really enjoyed I thought that was uh, a great game. It took me like a year to get it, or more than a year. I got it for my birthday this August, finally. Um, so I really enjoy that uh, bidding game, which is a mechanic I tend not to like, but it, it just works. Uh, I think the key thing I enjoy about that is the tile placement and building up a castle, I think is pretty cool. Um, so I'm kind of interested to see what they're doing with Palace and the fact that it's competitive, but your tile placement you're all placing on the same place type thing so that's interesting for me. Um, Lisboa uh, by Eagle Griffin Games is a much heavier game than I would typically be interested in. Uh, maybe I knocked the cable out. Uh, Justin has said the sound has stopped. Okay, that's better. Yeah, I must have just knocked the cable slightly. Um, so I'm not sure what was the last thing you heard, Justin. And welcome back, by the way. <laughs> oh, about 20 seconds. So yeah, I was just talking, going on to talk about Coast Park, which I love marble runs. Everyone growing up loved marble runs, right? The, the plastic things you built up and you ran the marble around, absolutely great fun. And Coast Park takes that and makes a board game out of it. This would be higher if it wasn't a bidding game. Because as I said, I tend not to like bidding games, though I've named several in this video that I do like, which maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I do like bidding games. I don't know. <laughs> but yeah, um, so yeah, you're kind of bidding for roller coaster parts and building it up that you can then run a marble down. So that sounds pretty cool. Uh, Lexi, yeah, thanks for being on, Lexi. Uh, good luck with your rehearsals, and hopefully, I'll see you at Aircon as you're going to be there. So that'll be cool. Um, as for doing more of these, um, I certainly will be. I probably won't be doing them as frequently as I have been doing lately. 
where it's been testing out equipment and setup and stuff and getting used to doing live stuff ready for doing live plays rather than Q and A's. But I'll probably do at the very least one one a month, probably one every couple of weeks. We'll we'll see how things go. Um, and if there's demand there, I mean, there's definitely people interested to chat to me, which is nice. Uh, I, I, doing the channel, I spend a lot of time on my own. So it's nice to have this kind of communication, this kind of chat with people. And yes, I get a bit of that through social media, but it's not the same. And this just gives much more of a community feel. So I'm really enjoying doing these live Q and A's for that fact. And the fact that it's not just people talking to me, but people who I'm bringing together and they're talking to each other as well and building much more of a sense of community. So that's pretty cool. Uh, so other shortlist games until we get any other questions. Uh, oh, so Justin's just said this was fun. Sorry, you had to duck out. Yeah, it's fine. It's understandable. As you say, you can always watch it later. So that'd be cool. And Lexi, yeah, see you at Aircon. Um, so yeah, uh, others, we had Castles of Caladale uh, by Renegade Games. I mean, this seems to be a fairly typical um, Euro game, really. But yeah, I mean, it, got, it interested me, the artwork and stuff. The main thing is that I've been seeing a lot about it for a while with no definitive, yeah, it's of interest, no, it's not. That's kind of how this has ended up on the list, really. Uh, Nushford, Nushford, Nushford. I'm, I'm not sure how to pr pronounce it, um, but the new U Rosenberg game from Mayfair Games. Um, I mean, I've still not tried A Feast for Odin because of the price tag, and I imagine it's going to be a similar case with this. Price tag is going to stop me being able to play it and not being able to play it in a cafe because my local cafe doesn't open up enough games anymore really for me to be able to try everything which is understandable because there was like me and maybe a few other people <laughs> who were playing them they weren't really getting their money's worth for those copies um but yeah that seems to be similar kind of thing um worker placement game which has me kind of interested uh photosynthesis by blue orange games is another game that i'm interested in from essen um it's not made the list largely because the main thing I'm interested about is the trees, the a the aestheticness of it, of having the trees and the mechanics. And it, it just looks like a, a really nice, cute game. Um, so that's kind of why it made it onto the short list, if you will. Uh, what else is there? Uh, In Between by Board and Dice made it onto the short list. Um, just because, again, it's a game I've seen a lot about, um, but not been able to try. Um, and yeah, I think the kind of semi-horror theme it looks pretty cool it looks like a not that done theme as well so and in a not very dumb way which kind of has me interested uh alien artifacts by portal games uh didn't make the list because i've already played it at uk games expo so though weirdly you'd think you've played the game you'd be more excited but I'm more excited about the things that I don't know. It's kind of the grass is always greener on the other side, I guess. Um, but it made it onto the shortlist because I did enjoy it at UK Games Expo. And I would like to see what the final product is. And it was great being able to sit and chat with the designer. And I've chatted with um, his wife who co-designed um, Alien Artifacts since. So yeah, I mean, I. I'm interested in the game, not just because of the game, but because of the people involved in that game as well. But as I say, I did play it at Aircon, I did enjoy, uh, not Aircon, UK Games Expo, and I did enjoy it. If you want to see that game, um, there is a video you can just have a look, two can play, um, and uh, Alien Artifacts, and should, it should come up on YouTube pretty quick. Uh, Merlin by Queen Games made the shortlist. Um, which is, oh, I can't remember the designer's name, but uh, it looks to be kind of heavy-ish worker placement game. That That's another one of interest um, and the Kickstarter is kind of delivering to people as we speak. So I'm starting to see a fair bit about it. Um, 
mixed comments so far, but enough to get me kind of interested in learning more and seeing more. So apparently we have got five people viewing. So if anyone does have any questions, uh, do let me know. Uh, oh, Tom's back on and he's advised Steffenfeld is the designer for Merlin. Okay, thank you for that. Um, yeah, I'm not sure I've actually, I must have played a Steffenfeld game, but I can't think of one. And it's also Michael Renick. Thanks for that. Uh, oh, we're suddenly up to seven viewers. It's, it's as if everyone finishes work at 5 p.m. in the UK and has five minutes to spare before they are allowed to leave the office and is watching this to pass the time. <laughs> might be the case, might not. Uh, if you're just coming on and you have any questions, do let me know. Um, there was one final game just kind of going through some of the games of interest at Essen this year that didn't actually make the top 10. Uh, there was one last one, which was Exit the Game, which would be on there if I knew it was going to be in English. So it looks like there's six... <laughs> uh, it's really confusing because it's mirrored. Uh, so that's that hand. Right, there we go. Six new Exit the Games coming out, but they're in German, and I don't know if there's going to be um, an English version. If there was an English version, it would be on this list. Uh, so that would knock off Gaia Project. And I will be buying all six of those as soon as they do come out in English as well. I, I love the um, Escape Room games. Uh, for my birthday, I actually went and did a live Escape Room, which was the first time. And I, I was like, oh, it was OK. The board games are better and cheaper. <laughs> Um, so Tom says, uh, does Castles of Burgundy interest you? One of my favourite fells and it's about £20. I think I've played it a long time ago because it's quite an old game. And I think at the time it was too heavy and too dry for me. My tastes have changed a bit, so maybe that would be a different case now. But... Uh, I mean, you do a YouTube channel, you know what it's like. You kind of want to focus on the new stuff because that's what the audience cares about. So going back and playing that's probably unlikely to happen at this point. Again, anyway. <laughs> Tom says, I really wish I spoke German for those. As far as I know, they're coming in English, but hopefully we won't have to wait the full six months like last time. Well, I mean, they've been out in German, I think, for a while. I don't, well, three of them have been out for a while in German. Three of them are releasing at Essen. So I think three months ago they came out in German, three of them. So we might only have three more week, months. But yeah, I really hope we don't have to wait. Um, it's a, it's really frustrating having to wait. They're fantastic games. Um, are you, you're going to Essen, aren't you, Tom? So you, you'll be able to get all the new fangled stuff and play all the demos and stuff. Which I, I envy you. I do. Going. I, I'd really like to go. But maybe another year. What other conventions are you going to be doing this year, Tom? Like, uh, are you going to Aircon, for example? Do, do, do. So, oh, blimey, we're up to eight people viewing at the moment, apparently. And my voice is really starting to go <laughs> because we've been at this for nearly two hours. Wow. So much longer than I expected the live chat to go on. But I mean, as long as people have been on and wanting to chat, um, I'd kind of allowed up to two hours, but I expected it to be like half an hour, everyone's gone and done. <laughs> but didn't happen. Um, Duarte, hi. Hi, Duarte. Uh, so, um, I don't think you have a YouTube channel, do you? you ju you're just very active on giveaways and stuff. Or do you contribute for, um, oh, um, Dane's channel, uh, Everything Board Games, maybe? I don't know. But anyway, hi, <laughs> welcome to the chat. Um, I'm not sure how much longer we're going to be going on because my voice is probably going to go soon because I've been talking for so long. But uh, yeah, so Tom is going to Essen, <laughs> but nowhere near Essen, ready. You don't really have much time left to get ready. You might want to get on that. 
you got what less than a week now is it less than a week no it's a week it starts a... I'm getting confused yeah it starts in a week time um, and it's also going to be at the expo and staying overnight this time I didn't realize you were only there for the one day last time or was it that um, you weren't staying so you had to keep traveling back and forth which is a real pain but I can understand the hotel prices at UKG are very expensive um, I mean, this year, normally we're in the Hilton, but this year we're going to be in the Premier Inn because it was a fraction of the price compared to the Hilton. It was like a third of the cost. But we will be there. Um, Aircon. Yeah, I'd highly recommend you go to Aircon. Um, it's actually my favourite uh, convention at the moment, I would say. Um, although UKG is bigger. The, just the atmosphere and everything of Aircon is absolutely fantastic and I think I was able to get a hotel for three, for two nights for something like 70, 80 pound in the Premier Inn there so um, much more cost effective than UK Games Expo and of course uh, the big draw this year is Rodney Smith's going to be there so you'll be able to meet him. Um, and you could probably get press pass I imagine if you speak to Mark Cook um, I can I can give you all his contact details and introduce you if you need it, but um, yeah, it, it's a fantastic convention. It really is, and they also do have exhibitors and stuff. But like last year, it was like half open gaming, half exhibitors, so <laughs> that's like unheard of. And from what I've seen of the plans this year, it's going to be the same thing. Well, I say this year, twenty eighteen. Uh, Duarte, no, I'm just very active, but I should have one, <laughs> a YouTube channel. Uh, there's no harm in just being active. I mean, if you have a YouTube channel, then it, it starts to be, pardon me, it starts to be a lot of work. Whereas if you're just active, you're just having fun with it and being a part of the community, that's great too. Uh, so Tom was driving back every day, which is a pain. Yeah, I wouldn't want to do that from a convention. You're tired at the end of the day. Like I, I find it so nice just climb back into the hotel room, just uh, on the bed, veg for a bit at the end of the day. <laughs> Duarte says he won't get a YouTube channel otherwise we'll be rivals um, the the interesting thing doing this and obviously I've got Tom on the chat here who also does a YouTube chat channel and stuff none of us are really rivals you, you would think we would be you know we're, we're all co competing I guess for viewers but there's not really a sense of rivalry with it because even though like I'm doing this full time and trying to make money it's not yeah i can't really explain it but there's more of a sense of community than competitiveness we we've all got the same shared troubles and trials of trying to build our channels of getting noticed by publishers and stuff and it's actually really supportive amongst all the content creators um so which is, which is cool uh it's great to have it be that way rather than be ah oh, you get away my content my viewers it, it's much more support each other, talk about each other's stuff and show each other, you know, like I, I'll say Tom's channel is Slicker Dips. He does great playthroughs. I think he was first on, I said about that. There's no sense of, oh, I can't say that because then people will go watch him rather than me. It's the hope that they'll watch all or they'll watch some of his, some of mine. It, sinking ship, uh, not sinking ship, <laughs> rising water raises all ships and all that. It's all really quite cool. Uh, so Justin says, I'll be at PAX Unplugged next month, but I luckily live close enough to go home at night. Definitely happy about that. Yeah, I think I would, I don't think there's been a convention close enough to Oxford for me to do that. That I, I think it would have to be like half hour journey, no longer than half hour for me to feel comfortable doing that because so tired at the end of the day of a convention that the thought of doing a longer drive than that to get home would just be whoa no not safe like my brain just is not engaged enough for that but it would be nice to be able to sleep in your own bed i think i, I think that would be nice anyway maybe i should throw my own convention that's a lot of work though. i already do a lot of work with the channel maybe i shouldn't take on more plus who would want to come to didcot Blech. um so Duarte says, completely agree with you. This doesn't happen with board gamers like it happens with the normal YouTubers. Yeah, um, I, I, I don't really know because I don't watch a lot of 
well actually yeah, that's a lot i watch a lot of youtube videos uh but they tend to be like anime and stuff like that um i don't watch a lot of like the video game youtubers which i've heard can be very competitive very toxic but part of that is the number of them i think and like when you talk uk youtubers for example there aren't that many uk board game youtubers i mean okay there aren't that many that i i'm aware of or know and are able to count off that there, there's maybe a dozen and so it being that few and that smaller community it creates that sense of community uh so justin says do it which i'm guessing is about the convention it would be terrible i, I can't even get people to come to my game days half the time let alone if i tried to do a convention uh <laughs> But yeah, I mean, it's something that does cross my mind occasionally. But as I say, it's the, the work involved. And I just, I, I have mental issues. And so the idea of taking on that additional pressure and work, but also it keys into a lot of my social anxieties and fears that I already have a lot of because of doing this and putting myself out there doing this that if I then also do things like a convention or something like that, if people then didn't come or not many came or whatever, um, yeah, and the fear that they might not be interested and might not come causes a lot of that issue. Uh, so G says, cool, wish I were there where we can just drive to game shows. Yeah, I mean, that would be cool, wouldn't it? Um, I think... I think Justin is Justin is in US somewhere. Well, he must be because he's going to PAX Unplugged. Wait, is that? Yeah, that is America. Yeah. Uh, yeah, between Philly and New York. So. Yeah, I mean, there's definitely a lot more of board game as an industry. I would say in America, that, with regards to English speaking industry anyway. If, if you go to America, there's just so many conventions. Like there's a convention every weekend and it's just a matter of can you get to it or not. Eventually there's gonna be one that's like within an hour of you type of thing. Um, easily, I would say in America. Whereas, well, maybe different parts of America, May, maybe less so in like the Southern states and stuff. Um, whereas you look at England and there aren't that many conventions um but th th there's not the demand for them and that's why so i'm, I'm actually glad that i'm actually going to get to go to a convention uh this side of christmas which is going to be uncon which is going to be clashing with essen um but that kind of makes up a bit for the fact that i can't go to essen so that's pretty cool uh that i'll be able to go to there and i'll be doing a panel and stuff at uncon in kent and I'm possibly going to go to dragon meet but I haven't been invited as press or anything to that. Um, and I've heard a lot of negative comments about it. So we'll see on that one, I think. Okay, any last questions or any more questions from anyone? Um, I'm not sure. Apparently got nine people on now. So it's it's going up. It's because of the time of day, isn't it? It's because it's gone up, gone five, people are starting to watch. Um, Duarte says we we only have about five or six conventions in Portugal. Portugal. I I don't think the UK is far off that. Let's see. We've got UK Games Expo. We've now got Uncon. We've got Aircon. I mean, most of these are very small, like one day events. Uh, there's Dragon Meet. There's oh there's one in wales uh dra which is dragon something as well which was recently um yeah so that's five there's one in tring so that's six uh which i can't remember the name of either yeah so we're not far off that um and as i say most of them are just like one day as well So Duarte is saying there's tend to be free days. Yeah, I I think the bigger ones do. Um, I think UK Games Expo is the only free day one in the UK um, that I'm aware of, really. 
and I don't think there's any four days ones, four day ones. I would like the UK Games Expo to become a four day one, but they're completely set against that, which is a shame. But uh, yeah. Oh, cool! You had uh, Dwight said they had um, Rado over for one, which obviously I guess it's not too far from Malta, is it? Malta to Portugal. I don't think that's too far, is it? So that kind of makes sense. Um, which is cool. He, he, I've never actually met him, but he seems like a really lovely guy. I, I don't much like his videos, but I think he, he's lovely. Um, and I did used to watch some of his. It's, it's the shaky cameras and the speed of it all. He, I mean, he does a run through, and that rapidness of it um, just doesn't quite work for me. But yeah. Okay. Um, so any any more questions, guys? Uh, sorry, I missed saying goodbye to just, um, Justin again. So we'll just give it a minute to see if we've got any more questions. And then I think I'm going to have to like go dunk my head in a bowl of water or something because I didn't actually sleep last night, so I'm pretty tired. Um, Bye, Duarte. Yeah, thanks for being on. Um, so I think we, I think we've got some people on, but they're choosing to stay quiet, which is absolutely fine. Um, yeah, I think we've got currently apparently eleven viewers, but they might be watching elsewhere on the video at this point, and not really in on the chat, um, possibly. Oh no, actually that's not possible because the the way it's set up is you can't watch the beginning of the video while it's recording. So maybe what I should do is stop recording so people can watch the rest of the chat and uh, primarily watch the main uh, ob objection, no, objective of this video, which was, uh... oh, Tom's off as well. Yep, yeah. bye Tom. Good, good luck with your recordings. Um, yeah, which was the top 10 most anticipated games of SM 2017. So that's at the very beginning of the video. Um, I think no more questions. We're going to call it a day there. So I do want to, as always, thank you all for watching. And, you know, I hope you've enjoyed this. Uh, there will be more live stuff coming in the future. Hopefully we'll get better with it. Um, and then we're also going to have live plays eventually as well. Oh. We've got action on the chat. Uh, hi, Marcus. <laughs> uh, cooked in parallel. I, I'm not sure what you've cooked in parallel. <laughs> uh, and we got para tu, para tu turbo. Um, nos fernos despues. Uh, I don't know that. Hold on. Let me... Google Translate. I'll see you later. <laughs> okay, thanks a lot. Thanks for being on and bye. Um, yeah, so I think I am gonna end the video there because I need to get some dinner and stuff. Uh, so yeah, at everyone who's been on, it's been great talking to you guys and having a sense of community and feedback. And I'll definitely be doing more live stuff in the future, as I say. And as always, thanks for watching and bye for now. <laughs>